Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. So we have this uh, rebellion, an explosion of rage and resentment by the House Democrats against Obama. Very ominous. Think back to Mad Dog Bush the Elder when he betrayed his reactionary Republican swamp there in the House, the various Kasiches and Gingriches back in uh, the early 90s, right, when he agreed to uh, tax austerity. He betrayed his read my lips, no new taxes. He had a big rebellion of House Republicans. Now the House Democrats are angry with Obama, uh, Obama showboating, hogging the credit, uh, ignoring the uh, the sacrifices that these uh, Democratic peons in the House have made uh, for him. Um, they're just angry. Uh, it's got a lot of things going on. The, the, the specific form that it takes is Robert Gibbs on one of the Sunday Blab shows last week said it's possible that there are there certainly are enough seats that are now contested and in play in the House of Representatives to allow the Republicans to take over there. Um, so they get the, you, you saw it on all the network news there on, on Wednesday, Thursday night. And now here in the, in the papers on Thursday, that uh, there's a lot of uh, anger. Pelosi is not happy with Gibbs, uh, and on and on. Well, um, let's look at it soberly. Um, the benefits of divided government deserve our uh, attention. When you have a political class which is this rotten, when you have a choice between Wall Street Democrats and reactionary Republicans, and that's what you have, uh, you have to hope for an event similar to that Monica Lewinsky story, ironically enough, of 1998-1999, because it helped you to paralyze the system, block it, uh, stall it, and avoid the worst. Uh, any deal reached between reactionary Republicans and Wall Street Democrats is going to be bad for the American people, good for the banks, good for the uh, top 1%. Uh, we have... Uh, just parenthetically, based on CBO numbers, one of the think tanks here in Washington did a study that uh, the uh, income disparity in the United States has tripled over the past 30 years. That uh, during the Jimmy Carter years, the upper, the top 1% made uh, 25 times more than the lower fifth. So if you were in that cream de la cream at the top, the top 1%, you were making 25 times more than the poor slob in the lowest fifth. That was under Carter. Now it's 75 times more, 75 to 1. Interesting. Income distribution, it hasn't happened. It's gone in the other direction, oh, Republican demagogues. The income distribution you talk about is nowhere to be found. The Reagan tax cuts and everything that came after have, ma have amounted to a massive distribution of wealth from the lower three-fifths into the top one percent. They are the big winners. They are the beneficiaries of this system. That is what Bush the Younger referred to as his base. So um, you have this, uh, this going on, right? The, uh, the, the polarity, the polarization, the income disparities have increased. Niccolo Machiavelli, who knew what he was talking about, said that if you have huge income disparities in the population, Another way to say that is that the country is corrupt, that a huge income disparity, and I don't mean 3 to 1, 5 to 1, 10 to 1, fine, but not 50 to 1 and not 75 to 1, and that's where we are. We are now, as of 2007-2008, in the worst income disparity situation since the Andrew Mellon reactionary Republican era of 1928. And you'll remember Andrew Mellon, under whom... Harding, Coolidge, and Hoover served. He was the Wall Street uh, dictator at that point. So um, we've got this this uh, going on, and the Republicans uh, completely wrong. Now, get back back to the issue of the uh, of the House. Uh, any any deal is going to be a disaster. So it means you have to hope for uh, a situation of, uh, of paralysis, of stasis. And there's some hope that uh, programmatic issues uh, can be cleared up, that people can realize that the Austrian school is bankrupt, Keynesianism is bankrupt. And what works is the American system. Surprise, surprise. Alexander Hamilton, Henry Clay, Abraham Lincoln, 
the prairie populists, Franklin D. Roosevelt, John F. Kennedy. That works. It has worked. We know how to do it. Uh, but Austrianism doesn't work. Keynesianism doesn't work. Chicagoism is a, is a, is a dumbed-down version of Austrianism. Uh, we don't want that either. So uh, if the Republicans take the House, uh, probably not the end of the world. Uh, again, your big danger is November, December of this year, because that will be a crowd of uh, defeated Democratic uh, congressmen, lame ducks, who are looking to Wall Street or to the Obama administration for their future livelihood, and they will be ready to betray you along the lines of the BS Commission now being supported by a whole range of neocons and other um, anti-national elements. Um, so that's what we're, uh, we're looking for. And, of course, summer, the summer festival of scandal, Obamagate, is it possible? There are all kinds of scandals hanging in the air. Um, you can look them up on the Internet, uh, Gigolo Gate. There's basically a harem of gigolos in the uh, precincts of the White House. We have the birth certificate issue. We'll hear about that in a minute. The Blagojevich trial. We have the extreme uh, czars, right, the lunatic ideologues that have been packed into the White House as uh, czars. We have all this going on. And, of course, the summer is a great time for these scandals to break out. More, most recently, the Mark Foley scandal broke out in September of 2006, a late summer scandal, I guess we can say, just at the borderline between summer and fall. In 2001, we had the Chandra Levy scandal, this unfortunate woman who was later found murdered, but this was somehow directed by the Fox News against Congressman Condit. So summer is a time when there's somewhat less hard news, especially in different parts of the world, and these scandals can emerge. So uh, keep your eyes open and do what you can to direct the attention of the media, radio, talk shows, call in. Uh, this tremendous weight of scandals pressing down on the Obama administration that might uh, benefit, because the more of these scandals you have, as the Lewinsky example from 1998 uh, shows us, right? The 1997 betrayal planned by Erskine Bowles, Clinton, Newt Gingrich, uh, Domenici, I'm sure, and the rest of them, uh, that was ruled out by the explosion of a scandal. And really, that's, that's one, of the, one of the defenses of the population against the tremendous corruption and collusion of the ruling class. Because in reality, of course, these parties are chimeras. They don't exist. This whole liberal left-right this is all a complete fraud. Uh, so therefore, uh, we need, of course, to, uh, to be on the lookout for these uh, scandals breaking out. Now, Obama is claiming victory on derivatives regulation. I have up on my website, tarpley.net, I urge you to take a look, comprehensive, comprehensive critique of this FinReg monstrosity, so-called Wall Street reform, in reality, nothing of the kind. Headline, Obama Dodd-Frank Finreg monstrosity delays derivatives curbs until 2022. You heard it. 2022. You can find this in Bloomberg News. Well, you can find it through the, through the links that I have on my uh, website, but it's not like I made this up. This is um, widely acknowledged in the uh, financial press that uh, the, the wretched remnants of the Volcker rule uh, remember, the Volcker rule is a wretched remnant of the re restoration of Glass-Steagall. That was Glass-Steagall was voted down again. The wretched uh, substitute was the Volcker rule, and that was then diluted, watered down, gutted by Scott Brown, who drives a truck, and he drove his truck right through it in the service of Bank of New York Mellon and State Street Bank. Very blatant example, boy. If you're a tea bagger from Massachusetts and you supported. Scott Brown. Don't you want to kick yourself for being a useful idiot and such a pliable dupe? Anyway, uh, it's going to be 22, 12 years until 2022 until these very timid, very minor limits on derivatives are ever brought in, and they'll probably be voted out in the meantime by some reactionary majority. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. 